I mean, let's do what we know we have to do. And let's actually start the game of magic. And now it started. And now. Hello everyone, it's Slav here and today one of the most amazing Esper decks so far. We didn't lose a single game with this one, so that's a good sign. And I have to say, like a lot of cards really surprised me in the positive way. Mostly Faithful Mending, man, one of, but it makes such a big difference on hitting your lands and fixing everything that is wrong. And thanks to Faithful Mending, we can, of course, it's as per control. Surprise, surprise. Uh, we can play cards like Lockdowns, uh, the, the Populates, you know, cards that are not always useful. And we can just cycle them at some point during the game if you don't need anti-aggro. It means you are playing against slower decks, so it means you have more time. So you can use Celestus, Fateful Mending, cycle them, and you can basically play those cards for free without the downside of them being in your hand in the incorrect matchup. So that's one of the big things. Uh, second one, Invoke Despair. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you kind of have to play this card in every deck, don't you? Uh, after the Abzan video, I've noticed that, man, even in three-color decks without the correct Triumph, it still is extremely helpful. And I wanted to try Esper with this one. We are playing three of them because we don't have perfect mana. Usually you skew, you, you skew your mana into the black super hard. But as you can see, we have a lot of lands that don't provide black, which means we don't really want to cast it on curve. We can, sometimes it happens, but it's not very consistent. We use it as a planeswalker removal and just card advantage at the right moment. And the rest of the deck makes sure that you survive until then. Celestus really helps as well. It ramps you with black mana if you need it. And it also helps you cycle all the lands and you know all the stuff. So deck seems to be running like a well well oiled machine. Haha, <laughs> fire accent joke. And I have to say, I'm really impressed with this one. It performed amazing for me. So that's really fine. We also have three farewells, so we make sure that against those soldiers we get to farewell stage when we exile everything so they don't get the the tokens. So this is the deck. I'm pretty sure you will like it, and in casting Invoke the Spurs and milling your opponent with Jaces is always a treat. So, uh, also, the games today were absolutely amazing. So, if you want to see a like, control mirror, how to play it, and when to strike, definitely watch, uh, watch the video because we had a very, very cool game. So, I'm pretty sure you will love it. So, let's go into the games. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. It really does help. And thank you for all the support to the channel it really means a lot to me especially that you know we are not talking about non-magic stuff but it's getting harsh sometimes <laughs> and it's not easy to crank the daily video and i'm working of course in a normal job as you probably know so it gets rough sometimes but thanks to you guys it, it is all worth it so thank you for that that's amazing and you don't know how much it is appreciated so let's go into the games and have fun all right we are going first that's a very good opening. That's a really good opening with lockdown and the counter spell. We kind of have everything covered. This can even hit the bankbuster. So even if we are in the you know wrong matchup, it should be the marsh. I messed up. And uh, not a biggest deal, but addict is disabled because I'm a dummy. Yeah, that was a really suboptimal play because we could have all the options. Now we have not all the options. Uh, I think Lockdown won't be for this matchup, but oh, maybe that was also a mistake. Because uh, I might be forced to counter something, then I won't be able to Fateful Mending and hit my land drop. So I hope it's like this. Alright. I, I think we are against Azorius Control. I know, genius. Wow, not a single land. <laughs> Seems cool. Thank you, thank you, deck. Oh my god, oh my god, this was way closer than I wanted to be. Whew. Okay, Fateful Mending, best card in Magic. Sure, you never counter this stuff. It's basically 3 mana, I draw card I would have if I didn't play this in my deck. Right, so the only real game is, is live game. It's a it's good card, you know, but you need to understand that there's no inherent card advantage here. Alright, and 
We just keep playing clans. We just keep playing clans. One of us. Oh, that that's the Emperor turn, isn't it? Here we go. Oh, I hate to counter it. I don't want to counter the Emperor. I might actually leave the token. Alright. Consider me interested. I like the Augur, but yeah. It doesn't have a clear like advent like a proliferate is great, but you need like at least two planeswalkers to make it really count. And it's not easy in such an aggro world. I mean I don't mind playing Clant every single turn. Uh, we need Black Mado for Invoke Despair, but this is what I probably mentioned in the intro, right? Sometimes the mana base can be sketchy, but we wouldn't YOLO it anyway, so, you know, not a huge difference here. Alright, we, we have only good cards in the hand, so let's just keep playing stuff. That's a Black Mana. Uh, I will cast Invoke after he fights for something, so he needs to play something. Then we counter, then he counters, then he's like, haha, it went through, and then we invoke. That's that's the plan. I have one card that I want to cycle. Oh, nice. This is a, a player forcer. <laughs> like, we can play it, and suddenly uh, we cannot play so passively. Emperor is one of the best cards in this kind of situations. Let's eat the first counter spell into Edict, into counter spell, into White Edict. All right. Fateful Absence, maybe. This is usually how they deal with Planeswalkers. Like, if I can untap my friend, I will. Okay, that's the second card we want to get rid of. You always uh, make double token, because like you want to make sure that Emperor is as empty as possible when they kill it. And also this force is kinda sweeper or double removal, so it really taxes their mana. This is not the turn, but the future one will be. And at that step we'll probably Faithful Manting. Nah, -uh. That's a pretty good card. You are not allowed to have it. Alright. Like, he has a lot of time thanks to all this life game, but we will try to force it. Hmm. That's a rough one. I really want to cycle the Faithful Manting stuff. Like, I know not much is happening, but believe me, there is a lot happening right now. So we can counter it. Also the Gravers. I see, I see. That's that's extremely mean, my friend. Uh, it doesn't hit Planeswalkers, so... I mean, enjoy. Those were very good cards. Man, Fateful Mending. I need to start using more of it. Like, the point is that we still have the Planeswalker. And that's a big... Oh my god. <laughs> I mean... Let's start with this one. No, we don't have enough mana somehow. That's not great. Alright, this is interesting. That should telegraph him quite a lot what we have. A bit too low. Like, I need more mana to cast Invoke into Counter Spell, you know? Uh, so, for now, given we drew so many Emperors, we need to, to just get some value. He's down to 5 cards, though. I, I didn't even realize. That's not a lot. Set Sloth with 6 cards. That he will play 1 at the end. <laughs> and he has way more lands than we, we have, and that's a big deal. Wow, three more mana a turn, that's insane. Uh, so we are falling behind on, like, yeah, th this is why it hurts so much to cast Invoke, because suddenly I don't have mana to do anything else, and he has, like, even after Farewell, uh, three mana to counter spell. I, it also suggests that he has a three mana hard counter spell in the hand. He already sh has shown that there is Proliferate in his deck, so I would expect the Reject Imperfection in his hand. So we are not the only one. Man, this is always so like packed in hidden action. Like nobody does anything, but when you know what's going on, it's just so much like tension and place and scenarios. 
I think this is one of the most interesting matchups in Magic. Because at some point one of you will miscalculate something and this is the player that will lose. Okay, that's really good. We definitely force a sweeper right now. Sure, I will get my card, my friend. Thank you. Four cards. And I get a new one. And he still needs to sweep at some point. He has a lot of time, but at some point. Okay, land is amazing. Thank you, Lant. You are you are a cool guy. Smork? That's the point. He is forced to keep dealing with those pesky little creatures, emperors, while we stack our hand with the good stuff. I really want to cast Memory Deluge, to be honest. He's not very tapped out, so we will keep playing a dance step. Uh, one of the big... Uh, you know, fears is that he will start casting Memory Deluge. He can nearly cast two of them in one turn. And that's not great. Witness the future. Oh, he, is he playing my deck? No, I, I don't use this one. Sure. Yeah, this is not something you counter. You just need to let them have it. You counter the second one, though. He didn't shuffle anything. Good choice, like those are not good cards. The good cards were exiled. He would take the Mind Splice Apparatus and maybe Augury, and that's it. Okay, so the Proliferate is for the Mind Splicer. Makes sense, makes sense. And I really want the cards. So I will prioritize Memory Deluge over the Emperor. Uh, he probably really wants to exile this, but might not have Oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. If not the exile effect, I wouldn't counter it. Uh, I want to force his last counter spell. Then we have free reign over the turn. Ah, not, not so decisive, are we? So he he wants to st still have uh, one counter spell. However, now we cannot cast invoke the spell. All right. Which is the turn that we want to overload him? Probably this one, so let's get the untapped mana. I should p first calculate what I'm doing, then decide whether I need one extra mana, but it takes time and, you know, I want to play a bit faster. Mm. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure he has a counter spell in the hand. I think it's Reject Imperfection. So if I play this, what happens? Like, let's go, and let's force him to use it at least. And yeah. Oh my god, it went through. Ooh, that's nice. That's very nice. I wonder what it means. We will cast it during his turn. Jace is amazing, but this is basically a win con, so let's make sure that we won't waste it. So this can be cycled if we want. Um, and this is top land, exactly as tower, so this is the worst of the three lands, and this is basically a perfect land. Okay, a casual seven. That's uh, that's a lot. In response, we will play it and see what he will do. Don't forget, you don't need to use Emperor right away. Like, she can activate at instant speed, so you, you know. You just wait until your opponent does something. And then you make a token. It helps if he wants to depopulate, like he's pretty low, that's only 11 life. <sighs> 31 cards. I see, I see. Okay, you got it, you got it. We'll, we'll make some use from the of the Edict. Like, it's not a big deal, it's something that I guess he had that is super cheap. Alright, a pretty bad draw. Like, if we hit Jace, we would already win the game, probably. Nary, nary. Okay, let's make sure that we don't mess it up. Sacrifices a creature token. You are a creature token. This is probably a white march. So one of our token will die when we attack. Ah, that's rough. I really wanted to plus one the Emperor and just attack for five, but then he gets rid of the Samurai with the to with the counter and we deal only two. So instead I think we have to go like this. So we can attack first. 
because we are not pumping the damage. The only punish is Fateful Absence into Wandering Emperor, because then we lose loyalty ability. But they don't have mana. Alright, maybe next turn then. Uh, this will be a rough turn, guys. Like, we need to make sure that we do something now, probably. Four and four, so I can make double play. He has witnessed the future, it means he has another one as well. Also, my spray surprises. Uh, from this turn, we can actually start losing super hard. Huh, I'm really not happy with the situation. Maybe I wasted one too ma many counter spells. I mean, this helps a little bit. Uh, for where hits this my spice apparatus, you know? Let's play the land. And we have a small syncopate. I think that's something. Let's let's see what he does. He doesn't have infinite cards. Yeah. It is what it is. Oh, blast zone. That's something to consider. Oh man, if that's all? Is this all? 29 cards. Um, let's go with this one. We want to pressure him, because he cannot ignore uh, Emperor, even if he wants to. So he will get attacked for 4 on the next turn. He will probably give get this to 4, unfortunately. We need double dice and him tapped out. So we just chill with Syncopates, I think. And start firing the memory of the rush to hit our end game. I expected like much more punishing hand than he had, but it's not over. Uh, it's still super scary. It's still scary. One, two. He can put three counters. So he he can get. Oh, nice. Okay, this is interaction I I forgot about. All right, do we want to win this way? Or we just go for the double dice? It will be hard because he can counter the second one. How many, like we have more in the deck, right? Yeah. Huh, that's a hard one. One, two, I will be able to play triple dice if I have to. It's just six. It gives him time, but I think, I don't think we'll win like this, you know? So far he's going card for card, that's why I'm not countering. My counter spells are for meaningful plays. And so far it's just one for one. Like you can see, he, I told you, he had this all the time. Like I told you, we... We don't win by the damage. That's not how you win this kind of matchup. You need to pressure them enough that they have to react to it. Like, look, he's scrambling to survive and we are just stacking our hand in the meantime with 23 life. That's where you want to be. All right, we can memory the rush and syncopate for two, so it's still okay. We fixed our mana quite a lot. It's six, eight, 10, 13 to our 11 so you know it's kind of good it's kind of good and if he syncopates this one we oh oh <laughs> okay this are definitely meaningful plays i think jace is our win con so let's go like this i'm not sick i need all the lands i can get i i'm not sure i want to have as much mana as possible I think we get rid of the for war. Is this the play? I don't love it, but I think it's better. 20. Alright, so. Farewell is amazing. It hits the apparatus, it hits his graver so he cannot witness the future. Smarty, smarty. But I really don't want to tap my mana. I need to make Syncopate worth it. And this is our only counter spell in the deck, I think. We use double two hearts of them, right? One. Oh, we have one heart counter spell, I believe. Hmm. And here we go again. He can kill the Emperor, but that's a lot of mana, and we still get the token. So, no. 
I think he will do it now. Good choice, good choice. I'm, I think I will just play it and then we memory the rush on the next turn. Yeah, let's not discard because the game need, needs to be paced. Smorky smork. Alright, like he's pretty low on cards overall. Sure. That's a cheap removal, unfortunately. Huh. I need to hit him with Jace somehow. We probably want to fish for Memory de Rouge before anything else. I can discard go for the throat. Here it is. And now it's getting scary. That's a lot of mana. That's why we need to keep up like Syncopate is that by the way, he had no counter spells. <laughs> so this is the only card that can be a counter spell. Uh, I'm playing very differently on the next turn in that case. Oh boy. Is this happening? Zero counter spells. <laughs> oh, that's what happens, my friend, when you don't have counter spells in your hand. And that's a good game. Because this is what happens when you show your control opponent that you have no priority. That's why we make full stop on the main phase. Like, when you know he has no counter spell, the game is over and you just unleash everything. Alright, opponent goes first. We have double white for the Emperor, but this hand is extremely slow. I think we need to mulligan it. Not sure if that's better, but I'll keep it. Like, we have at least some kind of plan. We So, with Syncopate, we play into Celestus Ramp and try to hit Farewell to solve the game, but we are already in very, very harsh spot, I would say. Alright, my cool dragon. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, yeah. Told you, it's, it's always something extremely aggressive right now. Alright, but we will syncopate for one, that's a huge deal. It's, even though, you know, it's not the best, like, counter spell value, the fact that you can prevent the tree drop from happening, this would be resort reinforcements at then step, so we already have, like, four damage to our face. Unfortunately, we have to play this one, because otherwise we cannot syncopate. And... I could go for the reinforcements, but then the tree drop is unchallenged. So it's like officer, siege veteran, Qatar, we do not care. I mean, if he's a good player, it's better to counter the resort reinforcements. Actually, I, I don't think he's roping, I think he's considering whether to play it. And that's kinda a choice. Okay, I gambled a little bit. Uh, I didn't want to stop for too long, because then he will never play the tree drop. And if you wait for uh, like two seconds, he might think that he, you are just slow on the button and you have... Uh, well, you, you, you get the idea. It works, so <laughs> it worked, right? <laughs> Alright, so that that's the tree drop. It's still a lot of damage, but maybe we can get to farewell stage. So this will be four, five, so... The tap, okay, okay. I definitely need Celestus as soon as possible. Oh man, being on the draw, even if you counter the tree drop, it might be too slow. On the bright side, Officer is definitely not the kind of, you know, stuff that you fear. It gives value by not attacking, because they need to be untapped, and it gives value by slowly stacking the soldier. So, very low impact card overall. And thanks to this, we can go all those shenanigans. One life can be extremely important. I will definitely play it. Uh, however, I'm not sure what the best, better card would be. We want to farewell on the next turn, and we will. Counter spell is amazing because it means. Is it? Is it amazing? I, I think it's not amazing, right? What about Siege Veteran? Yeah, Siege Veteran is the only problem. 
So this is for Siege Veteran if they play it. If not, we get extra card after the Sweeper, which is extremely helpful. And with Memory Deluge this turn, like this is going into our direction. I think we should be able to, to win this even on the draw, which is insane. Uh, this is the biggest hit of the game, and after that it shouldn't be harsh. Also, he won't be able to draw a single card with double officers. I honestly think that he kinda misplayed. The second one belongs to the hand, not to the board. Uh, like, I was already forced to sweep, right? So why overinvest in the board? That's a nice 3 lander hand. Amazing. Okay, I like the card. I mean, let's do what we know we have to do. And let's actually start the game of magic. And now it started. And now, after the sweeper, like having a single removal is extremely important. This was the, the card you needed before, so either he top decked it, or he kinda misplayed, honestly. I can double spell if I want. But do I want? I probably don't. So if he attacks, I can just play the Emperor, probably. Let's try it this way. Let's try it this way. Alright, so now the counter goes to the other thing. Alright, alright, you got it. So now it's more of a cleanup duty, you know? Brutal Qatar, sure. I kinda can use both of those cards, right? Hmm. Interesting one. So I need to Emperor the Brute and lock down the Veteran. 3 and 4. I don't think I would get anything better. Let's keep up to Mending because at some point we will get flooded. Oh, nice! I forgot about the switch. I mean, this is the same effect, right? Just better. Never mind. This is better. Because now we get got half an extra card for free. He's at zero cards, so lockdown won't get better than this. We cast a spell during our turn, so Qatar is, you know, flipped. And suddenly not so scared. Now we get even better deal with the Emperor. Enjoy. He has to attack. <laughs> he has to attack. And that's a game. He should explode after this turn. Good. Very, very nice. And even on the draw we did it, so I'm pretty proud about this one. Alright guys, going first with Syncopate, uh, Edict and the Populate. That should be fine. We have Triple Red, so that's also pretty good. We can definitely invest turn 1 into a Raffine Tower, so, so far, really so good. And we already have the Edict activated into Syncopate. Man, being on the play is so huge. <laughs> Um, is that the Edict Worthy? I think so. So let's just make sure that we choose the right option. We've been witness to the wrong hits. Okay, that that's changed a little bit. We don't have double white, that's something I need to consider for sure. So our Syncopate is the last piece of interaction. Oh, this is an interesting build. Not sure what to think about this one. This is not usually played. It's usually like some kind of reanimator decks. Alright. I mean, we are not main phasing anything. Our opponent is on the wrong side of the shuffle, unfortunately. So you know what? We'll wait for him. And we won't play any more lands until we hit the stuff. Let's just... Oh my. Yeah, we'll discard if needed. Like, I don't like this kind of game, so let's make sure that, you know... It's a bit even, at least. And when he plays the land, we start playing again. Alright, cool. So, this is a syncopated material for sure. We do not want to go too behind. And we'll have... Invoke the spell. I mean, we have a lot of counter spells. But there will probably be a better occasion, right? We have land, so let's just keep uh, playing them. Another fable. He really wants to, you know, cycle the stuff, so let's make sure that he cannot. 
We still have counter spell, but of course there won't be anything to counter. This is one of the good things about the build. Like, okay, I think this is... Yeah, this is the, the time. Uh, we can answer everything except Planeswalker. Never mind. And that's why even we are Esper, man, like Invoke the Spell just gives you so much stuff at the same time. See? We do not care. Because we draw the card, we pay the price. And are we able to do our everything? Not really. But if we play Celestus, right? Yeah. We have four black mana, no pain lands, alright. So let's just make sure that we don't whiff this one. And that's an invoke despair. <laughs> and this is why the card is still in the deck. You know, three color, never mind. And now Fable is too weak, too late, so it should not matter. So when we activate the Memory Deluge and Celestus, we can basically, like, curate our hand. Oh my god, that's a haste! <laughs> oh... I would say I feel bad, but that was pretty amazing. He really wanted this treasure. So, obviously we cannot allow him to have it. And yeah, now he can curate his hand, so... Still, game is going. I, I like the build, it's kinda interesting. Not exactly sure. I f it seems that he really wants to discard the cards, like he has everything that discards the cards. Yeah, because that's a reanimator deck. Yeah, that, that's what I expected, that it's a Traxa reanimator. Because if you play reanimator, you probably have a Traxa in the deck. So it was still scary, right? Alright. So we go into the night time. We switch the populate because that's not what we need right now. We also have farewell. Jace is absolutely amazing draw. I mean he wants to have big graveyard, right? So at some point we'll just draw three cards. Cool. Uh, this counter spell is extremely important. He plays four of the geeks probably. So no, let's not make it too easy. Alright. Let's let's start playing some aggression into the board. I've learned much during my I mean, let's start with the token. Give him the decision, non-token creature. We need to do it right now before the Kikijiki can make a copy. And given all his big spells are sorcery speed, we don't care. The worst that can happen is Emperor dying to some instant. But we still do. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh man, that seems pretty good. Uh, let's make sure the board is white. He's at 10, so he actually is pressed to deal with this. And that's my good dragon. Oh, he looks so cute. Uh, we can just go memory there, so let's let's do this. Double Jace can be a surprise. He's 8 cards out of, you know, losing the game. Uh, that's a good one, but we need to take it. Like, it's not our, you know, big win con. It's just something to annoy him. As you can see, his turn is just two mana right now, after the Brotherhood sent. And our turn is a bit... I wanted to say better, but now I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's go Raffin Tower. I actually wanted to cycle it. Maybe I will play it as a land. Alright, so we play this as a land. And I mean... How do we do it? We definitely play Jace. I think we mill him and then start going for minus two. For the sake of Firexia, it helps a little watch. bit. Then it will be 18. And two. Two loyalty. Alright, and then. Okay, makes sense. And then we minus two and we still have the Jace. Like, you, you need to be careful about milling reanimator decks, you know? It's, it's one of those things. This counter spell is the last piece holding, you know, the float, basically. So we need to make sure that we get huge advantage, because he has a lot of Atraxa. Probably. I think he should play four of them. Yeah. If we can make sure that we block the the reanimation spell, it's fine. And Jace puts enough pressure that he actually needs to do something.